Hey everybody, it's Lucille Azadora Therese. Um, I'm offering you this clip from the long form video that's also on our channel. The long form video is called Conscious Evolution, a new unified model of mystical Christian theology. This one is going to have just the model itself rather than all the um, rationale for creating the model. So you'll just get the piece about the, the vibrational levels, evolution of, of consciousness, and sort of how we apply it personally. So if that's what you're looking for, you're in the right place. Definitely like, subscribe, and share if you think it's interesting or you're getting something out of it. Also, please leave comments that um, and let me know how you're working with the material, what it's meaning to you, how it fits with work you're doing in your spiritual life. All that stuff is definitely interesting to me, and I'll answer whatever I can. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so this is the basic model. It starts with the love story of creation, just like where did we come from, that there is this natural impulse of the creator God to uh, create out of love more beings that can experience the expansive cosmic nature okay that's a whole thing in itself which would take a lot of sort of working with and and comfort with and experience with so on and so forth to fully accept especially if you're used to a um, human god model but this is now the vibrational evolution of human consciousness is a model for how human beings evolve and the goal overall so the big picture goal is that human beings have to separate from the great cosmic god in order to develop free will so if god being universal if there is not a se enough separation then free will is a meaningless concept because the bigness and completeness of god how could any part of god want something different than the whole god wants right so in order to be able to develop into a god being a full for better lack of a better word child of god not just an extension of god then the first thing we need is to develop a separate sense of self now in some ways this is an illusion right now this answers the question between like are we are we all part of god are we separate from God, right? This, the dualism question is like one of the oldest theological questions. This answers that in the sense that both is the answer, okay? We are actually never separated, but we have a sense of separation that comes with density. So when, we're, when we enter from a unified divine consciousness state into a physical form, that density gives the illusion of separateness and this illusion of separateness allows us to develop a, a sense of individuality and free will so the lowest level of vibrational consciousness is individuality and survival okay that's really important now i i promise you you will want to make this a hierarchy of goodness that's because most of us spend a lot of time in good bad consciousness lower levels of good bad consciousness it's really natural you're going to keep going back to it but i promise you this is not a hierarchy of goodness this is development and every part of it matters that's why it says every vibrational state is perfectly designed to support our evolution every way of learning is good every level takes exactly as long as we need okay so this first state is really important now it looks terrible in some ways in individuality and survival consciousness people are motivated only or primarily by the need to survive at all costs there's really no sense of compassion or presence for other people none of those things so in this model i'm kind of mixing <coughs> The personal and the um, global so there is the development of all human beings to we're all developing as a species and then we're developing individually so in this version of the model there's kind of it it's sort of it primarily is speaking from a sort of whole evolution when you get into the personal steps it's a little bit different how that's applied individually so this is sort of the whole species relationship to ideas of god and of morality and and spiritual development 
So again, individuality, survival conscious is, a, is very important. It's very dense, but this is the place where the sense of individuality gets built. Now, in that, in the most dense state, there is a lack of um, sense of connection to anyone or anything. So um, nothing, nobody else matters. Uh, the suffering of anybody else doesn't matter. And so you do whatever it takes. There's no sense of something greater than us, no sense of um, grander meaning, purpose, God, none of it. From this place, we can be completely unremorsefully violent. That is why we look at it and we think it's bad, but it is incredibly important. It's valuable. Okay. So there is no value judgment in this hierarchy except growth. Okay, so the, the only value attached to this is that we are designed to grow, that growth is the thing that matters, not where we are on the hierarchy. And we're never completely in one place, as we'll talk about a little bit later. But growth is the value here. If we're not moving and growing, then that could be a problem, but it's almost impossible not to. We can grow at different rates and we can kind of resist growth or embrace growth, but Growth is kind of inevitable because it is part of our design. You know, we are part of the divine nature that is set to grow. Okay, so next level, punishment reward consciousness. So in this now, there's um, the first awareness of a sense of something bigger than ourselves, something beyond individuality. There's a sense of community. There's a sense of family, a sense of tribe often. So now there's like this expansion of self that goes out into other people where something other than my flesh survival may matter. And then also it can be a first sense of God, but God at this level, especially in the lower end, remember each of these levels is a spectrum. It's not like a singular thing. So in the lower levels of it, um, God is just a, a big human. So God is like me, which is moody and reactive and punishing and all that stuff and has the same motivations as me, but just sort of more powerful because the observation of human beings that like I don't control everything, but I do control something. So if, if I control some stuff and then other stuff seems to be controlled, but I'm not controlling it then there must be a bigger version of me that controls it. That's like a really logical kind of leap in human development. So then there's gods that control the stuff. They control the wind or the waves or the sky or, you know, weather or crops or fertility, all those kind of things develop in this. Um, and the associated with that is a sense of reward. So if bad stuff happens, and good stuff happens, then it must be the thing that's bigger than me is doling out rewards and punishments. That's how I work. When I like something, I reward those who give it to me. And when I don't like something, I want to punish those who give it to me. So the, the big beings that are in control must be doing the same thing, right? So the whole world is seen in context of reward and punishment. And there's an intense sense of righteousness attached to that. As it develops, it's um, into this good, bad consciousness. Now, now there's a sense of morality that has compassion attached to it rather than just punishment focused. Um, there's a great deal of longing. So this is to be good. There's this first sense that, that there's something that could be um, essentially good, not just more powerful or bigger, but good in a real felt sense moral way like that that this god or the universe or however one is conceiving it um is that there is there is a goodness that is valuable uh, love and compassion presence kindness that there is a a, a a real and essential value to goodness that is beyond reward and punishment that good is good, even if it's punished. And that that doing harm, that there are things that are bad, even if they're unpunished. 
And so that's good bed consciousness. And it's this, and it brings about a lot of anxiety. So the, there's, there's actually a lot of angst that comes with this time too, because um, now there's a, there's a real felt sense of longing for good. And then an awareness that we're not good. A lot of the time we're not living up to that felt sense of the possibility of good. And so this is the first like um, real um, guilt and, and grief at our failures and incapacity. And the good, bad consciousness is a huge spectrum. You know, uh, it can go from the, just the beginning of developing compassion to a highly evolved, um, effort to be selfless and loving and to do good but it is still really accompanied by this grief at not good uh, as shame fear all these things come up in that and then this devotion service level of consciousness now people see this and they're like oh that's the good one right uh that's the that's the that's the really good one we want to have that but Devotion service is really a lot about release of attachments, okay? So the the effort to be good and the grief about not being good starts to dissolve because the good thing is has been attached to egoic structures, ego structures, okay? So um, now the goal is instead of, of trying to be good, the goal is now to release misunderstanding, to release attachments. The idea is I am already good. I am already God, right? The, but there are all these um, remnants and relics of misunderstanding in my development. So the goal is to release those. Now, now that's an idea people love, right? And there's so many people embracing this idea that I am already God and I'm already good. Um, that's not this because this is, this level is not focused on the idea. It's focused on the, the action of it, which means I am purposefully and intentionally going into things that trigger my attachment in order to develop past them. So you'll see this in, in mystical saints and various places. Now it can get distorted, but the pure version of it is that basically I long for and seek out anything that triggers my attachments so that I can move past them. What triggers human attachments the most? Illness, sickness, incapacity, injustice, being misunderstood, being wronged, being violated, right? And so instead of avoiding all this pain, which is the natural inclination for all the other levels, instead of trying to avoid that pain, now there's embracing of human suffering. Now, here's the tricky part of this. A lot of people have tried to do this from a good, bad consciousness level. Now, when I suffer, I'm good, so I want to suffer more. That is not a devotion service level consciousness. That is a good, bad consciousness attaching itself to the ideals of devotion service level consciousness. In devotion service level consciousness, there is no effort to be good. There is no effort to get to, to have won something, have gotten something, have been recognized as good, or to achieve goodness. The goal is I don't want anything to be between me and my ultimate nature. All these attachments are between me and my ultimate nature. And so I want to systematically dissolve them via embracing and accepting pain and all things that trigger my lower nature. This is really hard for people to understand. It's really beyond where our culture is at entirely like it's entirely beyond where our culture is at. So it's really a concept that people have a hard time with. Even the higher levels of good, bad are sort of hard for people to get. But we will almost always sort of try to uh, put ourselves in a higher category than we're typically functioning at because we're so invested in this sense of good and bad. We wanna be good. We want, we wanna attach ourselves to things that are good. 
right? We see them as good and we want that to be us. So that's, uh, you know, it's really natural and it's totally okay. And it's not really accurate. So if we're really working in devotion service consciousness, then um, there's no martyred energy in the sense of, oh, poor me, the negative martyr. Um, there is like an actual love of an embrace of the things that challenge us. And that's hard. Most of us aren't doing much in that area. And then there's this reunification when all the attachments, when all the misunderstanding, when all the lower vibrational um, things have been released, then there's a reunification with the ultimate consciousness, with God. But it is not, we, there is a dissolution here, but the uniqueness of our experience, the fullness of the completely unique human soul that you have evolved into, then when it dissolves into the great love and light and life, the great source, it is bringing a richness, a fullness, it is adding to and actually supporting the development of the, the great consciousness. Okay, so that's the model. Obviously, we're not yet unified um, with God or with ourselves. So now we're going to talk about the kind of nitty gritty of how a human consciousness develops a little bit. Okay, so if you see the circle with all the little parts in it, if you think of that as self, small s self, you know, the, the whole of our parts we have lots of parts we're not one right human beings are not like i'm not like one thing and my consciousness is not one thing we have different parts some parts are in different vibrational levels than other parts so this is the image of that there's our low end and our high end is how i usually talk about it so for example if this is a person then they have like four or five parts in the individuality survival whatever it is, two, four, six, eight-ish parts in reward punishment and four parts in good and bad consciousness. And each of these needs to develop. Every part is trying to evolve. And so when we see ourselves as a whole, we're going to have all these different parts, which means we have different motivations, right? The lower vibrational parts are motivated by lower vibrational consciousness and so on and so forth. So um, we have some options to how we work with this, but we need a toolkit to most effectively evolve. We will evolve naturally, even without any conscious evolution, without engaging consciously with the process. We will evolve. We evolve by trial and error. We evolve by experiencing things over and over and over again and learning from them naturally. But we have this capacity to then consciously evolve. So there's two levels of conscious evolution. And I contradict myself sometimes about this because sometimes I'm talking about one, sometimes I'm talking about the other. The lower level of conscious evolution is just the awareness that we are growing and the desire to grow. The next level is actually um, uh, embodiment of one's own soul nature, a knowledge of one's own soul so that it moves from being guided from the a mix of spiritual impulses and egoic impulses to being having our behavior and decisions driven by our soul nature. So that changes the level of conscious evolution. It's really like submitting more and more of our decision making and and movement to a soul level decision, which then makes a whole other kind of conscious evolution. Okay, so Again, we are very, uh, I would say that the human consciousness, uh, 
is is varied all over the country people are um, all over the world people are doing different things different groups are sort of uh, together and different conscious but we have a group unconscious in the United States that tends toward the high end of punishment reward and the low end of good bad that's kind of like the common denominator it's the most uh, typical and if we're not doing if we're not making a conscious effort to do something different than that, we'll kind of slide into punishment, reward, the good, bad. We really want to associate ourselves. It's very natural to our egos to really want to identify with things that are good and not with things that are bad, but also have this really deep terror that we're essentially bad in some way, unlovable, um, unworthy, right? So the good, bad is a big part. And then when we're really triggered as a society, we tend to go right into punishment reward, like who are the bad guys, who are the good guys, who needs to be punished, who needs to be rewarded. Um, and so that's the, the kind of group unconscious where we're at right now. Again, lower vibrations are not worse than higher. I know, I know. Really want to go back into that and you're going to find yourself doing that if you try to apply this model. So it's good to be aware of it. Every lesson, every level is essential. We cannot do the process without each of these levels. Just like um, there's nothing better about a two better about an eight year old than a two year old. An eight year old is not a better human being than a two year old, right? It's developmentally ahead, but it's not better. You have to be a two year old. There's nothing wrong. Two year old is a very important step, and it gives very specific gifts that are essential to the development of the human being. It is growth that is valuable. And part of that <coughs> is embracing the developmental levels that we're at when we're there. Okay, so what ha tends to happen is that we want to identify with certain parts of ourselves and not identify with other parts of ourselves. Once we're into good, bad consciousness, we have this feeling that all those things that are lower are bad and they should not be. And so then we build shame around it. Like, oh, I have these bad impulses. I have the impulse to survive at any cost, you know, to um, step on people, to get ahead. I have the impulse to, um, to try to play God, to punish and reward people, to judge people harshly. Um, all these, you know, have all these destructive, I want destructive, violent impulses, right? And so the, when this first part gets up into good, bad, or this part from good, bad consciousness, it's going, that's bad. It's all bad. I need to get rid of it. That is not how we develop though. What that does, like from uh, Carl Jung, the famous um, psychoanalyst, he talked about shadow and that if we shove negative what we perceive as negative parts into our shadow and away from the light away from capacity to be known then um then they become powerful sabotagers powerful self-destructive capacities instead we need to become aware of integrate and evolve each piece but that that requires us to actually um, evolve our perception of them and move more into acceptance and willingness, which is what helps lift the good, bad consciousness. Now, I'm going to talk about judgment and trying to figure out where you're at and where other people are at in this next slide. So this is a tool and not a weapon. If you try to understand this, if you truly understand this model, you will never use it to diminish, demean, or reject another human being. You will want to, because that's our nature. We have parts. We have parts of ourselves in those lower vibration, lower vibrational levels. We love to put ourselves above other people, um, to make other people bad, or at least us better. It's a really natural impulse. I'm not recommending that you reject this impulse and, and call it bad, but we can make a choice not to enact it and to counteract it when possible. Your judgments just won't function in this model, okay? It doesn't work and I'll show you why it doesn't. Okay, so let's say this is a person. Look, they have parts up in devotion service level here. <coughs> 
their high end is um, has a lot of development. Their low end still is in survival um, and individuality consciousness. So this is a multi-lifetime model. This is a, re a reincarnation model. So every life we're deciding to embrace and engage certain experiences, certain likelihoods of experience in order to learn and grow most effectively. So when we look around at other people, we can try to judge where they're at developmentally. We can be like, oh, this person has uh, is really reactive to other people. They're violent, they have mm, trouble keeping jobs, being around other human beings, right? There's, they're super defensive, not functioning very well. And we can go, oh, they're not very evolved. But that could be a complete misunderstanding for this reason. We can choose a life that is most likely to trigger our lowest developmental pieces. So these pieces down in the low end, right? And we can have the life be an immersion into those parts where the goal is just to take to, to lift that part up one step. So it may be that you you choose a life that is so stacked against responsible good looking behavior in society, you know, so filled with abuse and neglect and and um, literal like attachment brain damage, all this stuff that makes it so hard to do anything except individual survival, right? And it may be that your goal for that life is to not murder. And if that part can resist the, the impulse to actually kill other human beings, then you have actually done a huge step. You have brought up your low end in a dramatic way. Now, another person, right? same person with the same configuration they may come in and they're really they're really supposed to be focusing on a lot of good bad consciousness development um, but what they've decided to do is identify with their high end and so they may look like a very healthy kind loving they may run charities or you know they're doing all this um lovely externally uh good stuff but they actually have spent the whole life avoiding dealing with their lower vibrational parts and therefore they've made no progress in that life. So you can look at these two lives and say, oh, this is a really good life and this is a bad life and this person is high, high vibrational conscious, this person is low vibrational conscious, but actually the person who looks like they're a mess may have done a huge step in their development in that life. And the person who looks like they have it all together may have done no development in that life. You don't know and you cannot know. So the stance we take is, first of all, it's none of your business where other people are developing. Comparing yourself to them will never help you. And second, invest in your own work. That's where it matters. You're not good or bad. You're not, you're not less bad or more good because someone else is below you. That is a misunderstanding and a uh, addressing that misunderstanding rather than acting it out is the best thing you can do for yourself in your development. Like we said here. Okay, so why this model? I think there's a few reasons. Um, one is it is the answer to 10,000 different questions and I've tested this now. So I rolled this out about seven years ago in our um, spiritual communities across the country and, um, and integrated it with um, modern mystical teachings, metaphysics, um, and a specific spiritual development path that includes meditations and exercises and all this. I found that it is very helpful as a model that it helps people understand themselves and understand the stages of their development and where we have um, pitfalls and, and what some of the solutions to those pitfalls are. It really um, is integrative. It it does work with uh, traditional scripture. It works with neuroscience. It works with um, quantum physics. It works with all these different um, realities and facts in the world. And it, it seems to 
really be pretty consistently reliable in the way that it's able to be applied. So um, I didn't, it didn't come to me out of my mind and a desire to create logic, but I did have a, a, a need in my, in my nature for the theological system to hold water, to be pretty internally consistent and applicable in a lot of different places. And it does do that. Um, so this is a model, I'm offering it to the world. It will be in my upcoming book in, in much more detail, the book uh, called The Mystical Millennium. And we'll get into some more detail about the sub-levels and some of the nuances of this, these developmental stages and also how they're applied. So I hope this was um, interesting and engaging. And, um, and if you have um, questions about how to apply ideas in the model, feel free to put them in the, quest in the, in the comments section and I will answer as many as I can. Um, if you are just interested in trying to find holes and criticizing, I'm, I'm not really interested in engaging. Uh, it, Unless you have done a, a lot of work with yourself and with your own needs and motivations around these things, then it won't be useful to you. I mean, so I mean, just answering random criticisms won't help you in it, and it's a waste of my time. But if you have a real um, substantive question, then please do write it in the comments and I will, uh, I'll try to get back to you. They're often very complex, but you can also, you know, get some context for the metaphysical and hermetic aspects by doing um, the, the courses at Sophia Wisdom Centers in the Order of the Mystical Christ, because that's all the rest of the context for this model that then provides practical solutions and community. Okay, thank you and goodbye.